Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now at first glance this looks like an ordinary Socket 775 processor, but it's actually a special edition chip that you may never have heard of. This is the Pentium E6500K, releasing exclusively in China in late 2009 this CPU offered something a standard E6500 didn't, an unlocked multiplier. This was a big deal because that was a feature reserved for Intel's expensive high-end Core 2 Extreme series, and this was a chip retailing for roughly 89 US dollars. Think of it as being like the original Pentium G3258, except I didn't have quite so much luck with it, but more on that later. So whilst it seems strange that this never made it to European or American markets, thanks to the power of eBay I was able to get one sent over for just £11, or just under 15 US. Looking at it closely, and the only way you can tell this apart from a regular Pentium E6500 is of course the printed name and the model number below it, SLGYP as opposed to SLGUH. This is an important distinction to make, though it's one that can be confirmed in CPU-Z. Venturing into the BIOS and the multiplier menu of this ASUS P5NE SLI also reveals the true nature of the E6500K's apparent overclock ability. After simply increasing the multiplier to 14.5 and touching nothing else, I was able to get this to 3.87GHz stable as shown in this Cinebench capture. This increased its multi-core score from 110 to 159, a fair improvement considering I was using a stock 775 cooler. I was even able to hit 4 GHz like this by increasing the voltage to 1.3 and the multiplier to 15, though about a minute into the Cinebench test it crashed to a blue screen. Restarting at 3.87 GHz and I jumped into a few game benchmarks. I ran the Crisis in-game CPU benchmark first and the overclock helped me to cross the line from unplayable to playable, averaging 30 frames per second. The 1% and 0.1% low figures indicate some stutter which as you can see were picked up in the recording, though it's a nice improvement over the average FPS at stock. Bioshock Infinite also benefited from the multiplier increase, albeit we still had to run the game at very low in order to see playable frame rates. I stuck with older titles best suited to this CPU, though I attempted Fortnite at one point only to be hit with an infinite loading screen, so I'm not sure if the servers were down or whether this CPU was just giving up on me. 2013's Tomb Raider was also very playable, averaging over 50 frames per second at medium. Again, this was an improvement over stock speeds, but the CPU was still running at 100% usage throughout every in-game test. I used a 1050 as it was more than enough to handle this CPU. At this point though, I thought to myself these speeds were okay, but this is a rare special edition processor. Sure, the 5 and 6 GHz speeds I've been reading about are probably a little out of reach on air, but is 4 GHz too much to ask? With that in mind, I whipped out the Arctic Freezer 7 Pro and plonked it in the system. But this is where it all went wrong. I'm not a fan of saying so in the title, it sounds a little bit clickbaity, but after two days of misery, I thought I'd earned it. See, it was clear my CPU had been well used by the time it arrived with me. There were still signs of crispy thermal paste all over it. The new cooler helped a ton temperature-wise, the CPU was idling at 30 degrees instead of 38, but it just wouldn't budge past 3.87. I tried a different board, different RAM, different voltages, all to no avail, and then it started freezing. Every time on startup it would freeze, and it wouldn't leave the BIOS screen. Personally, I think this CPU was part of an overclock attempt gone wrong, whereby voltages may have been applied that were well beyond sensible. After all, this CPU was made for overclocking enthusiasts who wanted to smash the AMD Black Series CPU records. Then my worst nightmare was realised. After one final freeze, I pulled the plug, restarted the PC, and nothing. I even replaced my 1050 with the GeForce 210 thinking that was the problem and swapped out every stick of RAM I had. But nothing was working. For nearly 10 years, this thing helped budget gamers squeeze every last drop of performance out of their systems, perhaps allowing them to shuffle over the line of playability thanks to its on-paper overclocking potential. But all that ended here, with me. And for that little Pentium, I'm sorry but it's clear that this thing had been sent out to pasture on the second-hand market in search of an owner it could die with. I didn't exactly get the result I desired from this Pentium E6500K, 
a pretty rare China exclusive CPU at the time of its launch. But nonetheless, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed putting it together up until the point the CPU failed on me. But as always, if you enjoyed it, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know if you've ever had this processor or in fact have heard of it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.